A U36C profile reveals pairs of small auxiliary windows around the side cab windows. This was a U-Series notable feature. The Santa Fe train is waiting on the siding while the next train is an SP eastbound with four on the point and four helpers led by a Cotton Belt SD45. The Cotton Belt, or St. Louis Southwestern, was a subsidiary owned by the SP. The helper set trio of Southern Pacific U-33Cs drop down grade at Woodford. They will probably make their way back down to Sandcut to wait for another train to assist.
The tunnels and bridges on this line have but one track. There are sections that are double track, or two main tracks, between Bakersfield and Sandcut, and between Cable and Mojave, but most of the line is single track with sidings controlled by centralized traffic control that makes the single track line with sidings very effective in running trains with nearly the same efficiency. The grades were eased greatly in the surveying and design of the railroad here by using many curves that added length to the climb, as opposed to a more direct assault on the mountain pass using steeper grades. The total curvature in degrees would make the trains circle themselves over 21 times to gain elevation with reduced grades, and that's on the western slope alone. As a result, the managed grade here is 2.2%. Tehachapi connects the south end of the San Joaquin Valley, the world's greatest food production area, to the greater Southern California area, and the points east through the Sunbelt region of the country. Much of that food business has been lost to trucks, but in the past it was a more important source of revenue.
After running uphill around a giant S-curve, the track will take a short tunnel, number 9, to cross under the loop at Wei Long. After circulating around the loop, trains heading east will go into Tunnel 10. The short 351 foot long tunnel is the cut and cover type. The berm over the tunnel was built up by the 3,000 workers who were mostly brought in from China. The berms were made by using material removed from nearby locations that had material that was in the way. The equipment used back then was limited to picks, shovels, carts, and blasting powder.
EMD was finally turbocharging new diesel models to equip them with increased horsepower that the railroads wanted. This is a further look back in time to the 1960s. Even the auto industry was in on the horsepower race. The passenger train was endangered. It was long a money loser. As an economy move, the SP replaced two or more 1,500 horsepower diesels for some passenger trains with these 1967 built SDP45 diesels that made 3,600 horsepower each in one unit. The San Joaquin Daylight running to Los Angeles and the Santa Fe San Francisco Chief through here never made it to the 1971 Amtrak era. The SP was happy to see the Tehachapi line dedicate its tracks here to freight only. These next select scenes were taken from the SP's San Joaquin Daylight a few years before service ended by May 1st, 1971. But the sights back then were still amazing. They had a train order station at Bealeville up ahead on the right. This train once had a full dining car, but by this time, it only had an automat car where coins could buy a plastic wrapped sandwich from a vending machine. The scenery was impressive during the spring. The SP had wildflower special trains just to see all the beauty of springtime up here. The short poles carrying railroad telephone and telegraph lines and signal controls were part of the scenery back then. These scenes were taken on a round trip between Bakersfield to Mojave and then back to Bakersfield. In a number of spots, a handheld movie film camera was held out the vestibule door window to capture these scenes of a lost era. Changing trains in Mojave for the westbound trip required catching the westbound train the next morning. Heading back west from Mojave, we see scenes from Warren and Cameron to pass by a light helper set and an SP eastbound freight heading down grade. This is up at Summit in time to meet a Santa Fe freight. Past Summit and the town of Tehachapi is Cable, the location of a long siding with a crossover. The single SDP-45 had no problems handling a passenger train this size up the grade by itself while making good time. The 1750 horsepower EMD SD9 on the point of this train was once SP's gold standard for reliable mountain diesel power. Former 2800 horsepower demonstrator Alco C628s were bought by the SP along with 23 more. They pulled very well, but again, they didn't have the reliability or maintenance ease of EMD offerings. Running in helper service, a pair of former demo units will pass by. Alco had similar problems with the more powerful C630 units too. 